Hey, it's Rick here. 28 millimeter RPG. Uh, today, this is a little bit of a, a thing for Shauner and Sean Cherry. We were talking the other day uh, with Shauner. Uh, you can watch his video. Um, I'll put it down in the description. We had a little bit of a group uh, online chat. And uh, yeah, um, one of the things I mentioned is, hey, because um, we were talking about well, what's what's in our what's in our game stores and how will they change? Well, this here is uh, inside of uh, Strange Ideas. It's located in Grand Prairie, Alberta. Grand Prairie is a fairly large, you know, it's it's a city. And uh, it, uh, it's got a massive community on the outskirts of it. Uh, you know, you got the city center and you got like all these outlying areas all the way from Dawson and BC, all the way to like halfways to Edmonton. We get people coming in from all sides and it's a pretty big central hub of activity. It's a big, it becomes a, it's a, it's a, it's a small city that becomes pretty big because, you know, everybody from the outskirts comes in and, and does their shopping and visiting. And and uh, yeah, it's 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 a big it's a big central hub. But we're going into uh, Strange Ideas here, which is uh, owned by Kevin. Kevin's awesome. Kevin Strange. He's uh, and he's he's pretty cool. Uh, talked with him a, a bit as well. Not not during this uh, visit, but uh, in in general, the gist is whatever whatever D and D whatever happens with D and D, it really won't affect what's going on here in in according to this store. Because uh, you'll see you'll see what we have on the shelves here. Let me let me just go ahead and play it through for a bit. I killed the. Uh, Lots of comic books here. I killed the uh, volume for it. And this is where uh, the game room is. So I just take a peek in there. So a bunch of tables in there. Played uh, a bit of Battletech in there uh, uh, last year anyways with uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, um, uh, Alpha Strike. So we played a bit of Alpha Strike in there last last year. At least I did. There's tons of games that go on. This is... Uh, in the morning, so uh, not very many people in here. There's only one other guy yakking with the uh, guy behind the uh, uh, counter, and Kevin was in his office doing uh, uh, eBay stuff because he he sells a lot of cards on eBay. So a lot of his a lot of his income is from uh, buying and selling uh, that sort of stuff. So collector cards. So let's continue on here. This is the D&D &D section. It's pretty large. Lots of miniatures. Um, so just going through the shelves here of miniatures. Feel free to... This is a new thing. They they ended up getting a dragon head. So uh, <laughs> not sure how that happened, but cool. Uh, Pathfinder minis, D&D &D minis. They're all kind of... Uh, here's our... Pathfinder section. So this is all the Pathfinder 2 stuff. Um, some interesting stuff. Kingmaker in there as well. So. And once again, more of the collectible ones up top. Uh, the uh, miniatures. And we'll go to the other side. This is the D&D &D section. So you can see the, the usual stuff. Um. And I'll let the pictures basically explain everything themselves. And we'll just hold up here. This is Starfinder Battletech. Oh, there's a pretty large contingent of Battletech players in this uh, area. So, um, interesting to know. Uh, he sells a lot of Battletech. There's some vampire stuff in here. Some, uh, you know... Star Trek Adventures and stuff like that. Um, Lord of the these are mostly all the the mini centric board games and stuff. You can see there's a lot of uh, tile sets and tile, um, you know, like the Warlock tiles that you put together and stuff. 
Um, I believe they also have battle systems there. I've got a ton of battle systems. I think I bought like uh, three or four boxes off of, off of these guys because it ended up being cheaper for me to purchase through the store than it was to go directly to uh, battle battle systems, which is located in the United Kingdom, and have it imported in. I did originally import two boxes of uh, battle systems when I originally had it, so it's uh, interlocking kind of kind of stuff like kind of like it's not like the 3D tiles like uh, um, it's warlock system where they all snap together. This is more like it's it's buildings and stuff that you that you. Put together it's like a really really hard cardboard i'll do a video on that later uh just all the zombicide this is all like i like i say mini centric kind of stuff a bit of warhammer in there um now this is his wall of uh board games and up top is all the uh, uh little statuettes and stuff like that the collectibles in there so just uh through this, give you an idea of what what kind of games are in the store here. A few of them are on discount with their discount stickers on them. I'm pretty particular about what types of uh, board games I I collect, so. Uh, over here, we're getting into, they, ch they switched it around on me. So I came in here going, wow, everything's uh, changed around. This used to be the discount area. But now it's all filled with collectibles. And this side is going to have all the Star Wars stuff or Star Wars Legions and, uh, and, you know, uh, Star Trek minis for the, um, for the space battles. There's all the Battletech stuff. Looks like he got in a whole bunch of new Battletech in here. And I pretty much have uh, a majority of this stuff. Uh, the uh, paint section, which I enjoy thoroughly. I just, uh, I actually just picked up a bunch of stuff here. I kind of show you. I got a, not a whole lot, but uh, a uh, bottle of uh, the... Uh, this is the air version of the um, primer. So some black primer air and uh, some, uh, I decided to pick up some brushes here, which these ones are the army painter. There we go. The dry brushes. So I got those on uh, kind of, kind of uh, it was shadow and sun shadow was asking uh, what the difference will be between these brushes and the ones that I have on, in my uh, Artis Opus uh, set. Uh, so I will do a comparison. I just picked these up uh, like twenty twenty four ninety nine Canadian. So uh, American about twenty bucks, I guess, or or somewhere around there, seventeen to twenty dollars. And uh, I just picked them up just to s compare. And, uh, you know, you can always use uh, more uh, dry brushes. I do use, uh, I don't have any here, but I do use uh, like the makeup brushes that you get from uh, uh, China and stuff like that. I do have a few of those so I can compare everything together, see what, what the advantages or disadvantages are, uh, see how easy they all clean up and, and that sort of thing. So... Uh, we'll continue on with this video. See, there's some uh, interesting items in here. Uh, oh, you can see that. Oh, there's a, uh, I painted a mini down over here. And this is the, uh, down in this corner. This, I did a repair job on this, uh, on this, uh, um, you know, collectible uh a death pool um you know statue uh there was a, a the broken this this gun here you can see it's got a you, you barely see it it's in behind he's got he's he's got it behind his head and he's kind of shooting it at an in behind his head kind of idea and i did a repair on this so it, yeah i made it very seamless so it looked it looked you know like there wasn't anything done to it. So I, I really, 
I had to drill into that <laughs> into that material. That that is like one of the weirdest. Uh, um, I guess it's resin, and uh, this resin does not take to uh, um, the uh, like any kind of like um, crazy glue or anything. You don't. You can't use that. You got to use like the uh, green stuff and and have it. You know, and and get it perfect, and you know, you 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 blend it all in, and you you sand it to death, and and you go over and over until you get the perfect, you know, smoothness, and then uh, yeah, paint it. Uh, fortunately, the blackness of the gun was a perfect match to uh, to Vallejo uh, primer, so it, I didn't really have to worry too much about. Uh, the uh, the color difference it, it it's seamless so it worked out really well. Um, I gotta which reminds me I gotta bring in some more minis and and some of my painted stuff the bugbear and stuff and, and drop it down here so I can uh, hopefully get some more commissions going on that way. And uh, yeah, some uh, neat stuff. Paints, lots and lots of paint. Every, everybody's, you know, paint is a big thing. There's a lot of a lot of uh, modelers in in town. Here we go through all the collectible um, Funko Pops and stuff. Facing back at our. Uh, board games again and going through this one more uh, manga centric and uh looks like he's got lots of caps and shirts now he basically tripled his uh t-shirt collection there last time i seen so um uh, just to kind of put that out there that's basically the uh uh what uh what our uh uh our game store there uh looks like so um let's go ahead and grab me and throw me over into the corner here but uh yeah that's uh that's the basics of uh the shop that we have here in town um just thought this might be of interest with uh once again sean and the gang or anybody else there that was curious um uh, I have there. There's two uh, different stores here. I didn't go to the other one. The other one is more like a uh, kind of like a has a bit of a restaurant, so kind of a fast food kind of restaurant kind of thing uh, with uh, booths, and you can sit in there and 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 play games. And they have it's it's quite a bit smaller than uh, than Strange Ideas, uh, but. Uh, uh, I gave you the the better of the two stores anyways, you know, the one that has more of the stuff. Uh, the thing that I missed out was a very small section of uh, uh, games, uh, games uh, workshop uh, miniatures. They basically have a small kind of small section of, uh, of the uh, Warhammer 40K stuff. It's not very big at all. I don't think it's... It's really as big as, say, you know, just the D and D miniatures. So you can see that he's concentrated mostly on D and D miniatures and BattleTech, because uh, that seems to be the thing that goes on big here as far as uh, people uh, what they play and uh, yeah, how how the uh, uh, yeah how it just all you know works together he, he they were saying that if if uh if D, D beyond you know basically wrecks whatever's going on and they they end up uh uh getting rid of the D, &D section well it's it's not really that big i mean you still got pathfinder you still have all the hasbro minis and all that stuff you know they're they're gonna they're still going to be producing these things. I mean, they're a, they're a money maker for them. So why, why would they get rid of that? Um, as far as D and D beyond, well, I don't care. Uh, no, no biggie. The OGL, all that stuff. Um, 
you know, I play different games. Uh, I get into different stuff. So, um, I'm not, I'm not worried at all. Like I say, I probably will end up selling off my, uh, 5e because it's just basically taking up, uh, well, half, half of one of my shelves. And, and it's not a, it, that's not a huge section. It's like a, a section about this big full of, full of books. I have basically the main books, uh, a couple of the additional ones like Mordekainen's and Xanathar. And then I have only, uh, two books that are setting. One is the Sword Coast and the other one is the, uh, um, the Theros, the, uh, uh, myths of Theros or whatever they call it, uh, which I wasn't very impressed with. I thought it was kind of lacking in a lot of, you know, material that the game master can use for the setting. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I can let all that go because I've never actually played the D and D, uh, 5e, I've read through all the rules and I got the gist of it. I'm able to make a character and stuff, but nobody's really ran a game around here that I know of. Like, like personally, I'm sure there's been plenty of games going on. I know Spencer's son plays with a, a group of kids as well. And, uh, he, he enjoys playing 5e quite a bit. He likes the board gaminess. Uh, and Spencer always gives gives his son a hard time about the board gaminess. You got you got to play theater of the mind. <laughs> he's 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 on that he's on that kick. He 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 likes theater of the mind, so uh, he's enjoying it quite a bit. And keep in mind, you know, Spencer Spencer is is rather new to the game. He got introduced to the game by his son, and then we found out I played you know, role-playing games, he was interested in, in actually uh, participating. So he's learning and everything. Uh, Josh has never played any D&D &D and stuff like that. He has bought the Castles and Crusades book because he loved playing the uh, Castles and Crusades with me because that's how I introduced these guys into, uh, into role-playing was uh, doing that. And uh, and I did introduce the miniatures so that his uh, so that Spencer's son could understand what was happening in the game, and that he realized, hey, it wasn't that we weren't using it like full on tactics wise because he was realizing there's there's it's less tactic centric than uh, than D and D five e so um, which. Uh, which lent itself, you know, rather well to an introduction to a person that would normally play 5e and they can they can kind of understand, hey, you don't really need the minis here. And then you can pull back and do the do the theater of the mind stuff, which we did with a lot of the town area. But as far as, you know, like going into the dungeon, I did kind of draw out part of the map so that they could see where they were. And uh, just for the sake of, of uh, you know, continuity of, of what they've played before they could understand the concepts a little bit better and realize how negligible they were as far as the uh, castles and Crus crusades goes anyways that's uh that's my spiel for today hope you enjoy that i might post a video later on if you like what you see and uh you feel like it subscribe just do it you learn things from me, I learn things from you. Uh, we learn together. Let's do it. Subscribe, it's free.